All right, I'm going live today because I have to make a custom 3D file for print someone requested for a neon sign. And so I am going to be walking you through my process to create a 3D file that then I'll print on my uh, 3D printer to make a neon sign. So give me a second while I set up here. I'm going to be sharing my uh, desktop with you guys in a second, but I need to get it up. Uh not diet, I want to duet. Okay. And I'm going to be making a custom sign for um, 3D printing. And um, so right now I, I use duet. I get this question. I've had a few people send me like private messages. I use duet to share my desktop with you guys when I'm doing this kind of stuff. So I was asked to create a neon sign. Uh, let me just put on my photo booth so I can show you what the neon signs look like. All right, so these are the signs that I'm making right now. And these are just using EL wire. Uh, it has a battery pack. So this is what I'm gonna be making. I'm making a custom one. This one was custom. A lot of you have asked me about my love sign which is also made with EL wire. And I made this one, this is a file I downloaded from, uh, I think it was Thingiverse or Thangs 3D um, and just printed it. But I really like being able to make my own custom ones like this one. And I'm gonna show you how I do that using Canva and Tinkercad. So I'm gonna walk you through that process. So let me just turn off my video here. Before I do that, um, let me uh, just show you also the type of wires that you can use. Let me put my uh, camera back on just so you can see. So you saw the models already. So um, again, these are the signs. And for these little signs, I'm using EL wire. So this is one I, I posted a video to show you. So it just comes with a little connector and basically you just glue this to the sign and you have to create a, uh, an inset in the sign to be able to do that. And so I'm gonna show you how I create my custom signs. So I'm gonna be using um, Canva and Tinkercad, which I have both open here just so you can see. So this is Tinkercad, it is free. So all the tools I use, you can use the free versions of it. You don't have to pay. I usually do this in Blender um, but Blender is a little bit more finicky, and I think it's a like if you've never used any of, of the like 3D modeling um, software, it can be confusing. So if you've seen any of my uh, videos on creating filters, I use Effect House, I use Spark AR, I use Blender. Uh, those tools are a little bit more complex because the layouts are different, and it takes a minute to really learn how to use those. But for the most part, everyone knows how to use a text editor. Um, I'm using Canva. You can do this like in PowerPoint if you want to. Um, I have a pro version of Canva. You don't need it for this though, at all. So let's start off. So I was I got a custom sign request, which I'm gonna make. So I, let's start off with the dimensions in Canva. I just go 1200 by 1200 pixels for my uh, design here, my design space. And on this clean Canva, like all I do is legit take uh, text. I don't use uh, any of these pre-made text here just because I don't have as much control over it. So now with that, I tend to make it bigger so I can see, there you go. And then we'll play around with this once we get the words in here. But the first thing I do is I'll type out what they asked me for. So I'm going to do it as two. So this is the first, it's a name. I'm going to pick a font for this. Let me just, uh, let's see. I think finding the fonts is always where I spend the most time and when I'm creating any kind of signage. Um, so I used to create signs by hand and now, you know, that I can do it with a 3D printer and make it snazzier. I like 3D printing these and then using the, the wire or the neon, the EL or the neon wire. It looks so much better. Um, so when picking a font, this is the thing. So you don't, we wanna make sure that your font isn't super thin like this or like this, although that's a cool font, right? 
um, because most of the time you're not able to bold it. But this one I can bold. I could potentially use this one. Kind of like it. But um, if you're going for like a script, which I get a lot of requests for people, they want to know how like how do you do I how do I do a script sign? So I would say use you can use a curly script like this. You need to plan out where you're going to place the holes for the wire to go through. So I think the more curlier the script, um, the more holes you need. We could do something like this. Um, this is for uh, my little buddy, Tyler, who is a long jumper. And so his mom wants me to make a, him a sign that has something to do with long jumping. So let's see. Let's pick out a fat um, font for him. So I'm going to use this for him, for his name. Let's see if I can move this around now. Okay, I'm just going to put that there. And then I'm going to add another page. And um, I'm just going to add text again. Let's say the goat jumper. I know. This is corny. But my little man will like it. See. Might make it 200. I think I need to put it on two lines, which is fine. Ooh, that's too big. Oh, I made it 800. Okay, so as I'm going through this, let me close my door because my fan is like loud. So as I'm thinking through this, I still think about like, what is the font going to look like? What's the layout going to be? Do I want it to be script? Do I want it to be just plain text? Um, meaning a straight text, something that's not decorative, or, or like what do I want for it? And also how am I gonna do the inset for this? Do I want the inset to be on the top? Do I want it to be see-through in the middle so I could just put the wire through? So I'll show you how both uh, work out here. So let's find, what font did I use on this one? So I use a grander, a grander. Let's see if I can find out where that is again. No, it's in here. No, it's alphabetical. It needs to go up. Okay, so once I get all of my text the way I want it, um, we will then move into Tinkercad. Oh, here it goes. Okay, so I'm going to do this one. Let's try the wide. I kind of like that. I think I need to make the font a little bit smaller. Let's do 190. Mm, let's go smaller. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's say I want, this is everything I'm gonna put in there. Um, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download these files. I like to download them as SVG. So I change my font here to SVG. If you know how to use like Cricut or Silhouette, uh, design studios you can create your font in there also just make sure to download it as an svg with transparent background if you're doing this like in powerpoint or word or any kind of photo editor like a gimp or ink space or photoshop or illustrator just make sure that you export your file with no background make it transparent uh, you can uh, use uh, pngs uh, jpeg uh, sorry PNGs, SVGs, which you have no background uh, with Tinkercad. So let's do that. So I'm downloading it. I'm, oh, I need to call this. I didn't give it a file name. So I'm going to download it to my desktop. All right, so downloaded it as a zip. So I'm going to now minimize this. Here's my file. And there it is right here. So now... I can go in here and I have my two separate SVG files, right? So when we open up Tinkercad, you can register for a Tinkercad um, account. It's free. They're, they have some learning, um, uh, some of the classroom resources, some learning resources if you've never used it. Um, I use it a, a lot. I'm going to just click new here. So I already have a... Um, account so I'm gonna click new 3d sign you can use Tinkercad to build circuits and code blocks the code blocks is similar to scratch I'll, I'll probably do something on that uh, on a different uh, live 
But we're gonna go into Tinkercad now. And what Tinkercad gives you, let me just orient you really quick. Hold on, let me take this off there. Sorry about that. So what Tinkercad gives you is this workspace. So this here is your work plane. Anything that's on that work plane and is visible when you export it, you'll be able to use. Uh, on the side, you have some controls here. This is to switch from flat view to like uh, back to our polygon view. You have a zoom in, zoom out. Um, this is a fit, you know, kind of fit into the view. And then this is the home view, which is this view. And then you can rotate your models here or your whole platform. So you can look at the different sides. So if you're, I don't use a mouse. A lot of people ask me that too. I don't use a mouse, I use my trackpad. I've always used my trackpad. Um, I don't know why, just never used. I'm not keen of mice, I guess. Okay, so now let's import our image that we created. And let's just choose from file, go to the desktop. Here's Tyler stuff. Let's just do his name. I won't do the other file um, just for the sake of time. But what it's gonna do is you'll see down here that it's importing it. Here's the imported file. So let's look at this file really quick. Let me zoom out so you could see. So this is what we created in Canva. These files, when you create them, are a bunch of like triangles that are put together. And so you'll end up with what's called vertices. So vertices are the points where uh, two angles meet. Um, so you'll have like a face. So this is considered a face, right? This is considered an angle and the vertices are these corners. But when you do a 3D model, here, let's do this a little bit more. So again, this is a face, this whole top part, this is a face. This here, this corner, here, right? Right here where everything meets, that's your vertice. So when you're creating a model, you wanna make sure that it's smooth enough where you don't have a lot of jagged edges and that's where your kind of resolution comes into place. Okay, so we have uh, our word here and you can see there's some thickness to it, right? And if we click the model, we get this menu over here and you'll see that right now it's a height of 10, quality of 10 and the fill mode is default. We can change the color up here, make it a different color if we want, just for the sake of you know contrast or whatever. I like to use hot pink and gray and I'll show you why. So right now I have my name and what I want is I need to create an inset so I can put the wire inside of the um, text, uh, whether, sorry, whether I'm using EL wire or I'm using ne actual neon wire. The EL wire is about, I think it's like two, three, two to three millimeters in width. And uh, for the holes, I make those about four millimeters and they fit perfect for when you're putting your wire through. So how do we get that inset? So the reason I love Tinkercad is because it's super easy to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this smaller because my 3D printer does not print this big. So I'm just gonna grab these little uh, handles on the side and hold down my shift key so I can make it I'm not going to make it fit the work plane completely but I'm put it about there right and so you can see the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the word so I'm going to have with the word highlighted I'm going to click this up here I can either click the icon or click Control D okay so now we have two copies of it, and I'll show you how you can tell. I'm gonna change the color of this top one, and there you go, we have two words, right? So let's put it back. Let's see if I can line it up again. Okay. So now, what I'm gonna do is with the top one selected, the gray, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Let's put it up to 15. Okay, and then the fill mode for it, I'm gonna click on that and, I, and I'm gonna select outer line. And what that's gonna do, is gonna remove the inside color of it and it's gonna create that inset for me automatically. So I didn't do anything, so look. So now the inset is a little uh, shy for me, right? Meaning, do you see 
that inset, that's where we can run our wires through to create our uh, signs, our lighted signs. I'm gonna click on the pink now, and I know the pink is selected, because it's over here, and I'm gonna change this to five to make the inset a little bit bigger. Okay, so now the inset is a little bit bigger. So now with this sign here, um, I am ready to be able to send this out to print. I mean, legit, that's what it is. If you don't wanna add holes, um, and you're just gonna glue stuff and figure out how to run it on the outside, that's fine. I like to add holes to my sign so I can run my, my EL wire or my neon wires through it. So to add the holes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select over here. You see these the cube and the cylinder that are grayed out? These are holes. So when you select these um, and you drag them in here, it will make a hole, oops, a hole within whatever you put it, you uh, attach it to. So let me just show you. So let's first get this to the size we want. So I make them four millimeters on both sides. So you just get to this by clicking on the handles and then click the top here to make it tall just so we can have, because we're gonna need to run this through the sign to make the hole. And I'm just gonna duplicate it by pressing Control D. You can use the uh, copy icon and now we just have to plan out where the holes go. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna drag one of these and I'm gonna start a hole here. And I'm gonna start at the bottom. Okay, so this is gonna be my first hole. And I want this to go all the way through. So do you see how it's not all the way through yet? So it won't create a hole. So just click on your cylinder and with the arrow, just drag it down to you see it come out the other end. That's gonna be a hole, right? So I'm gonna put one there. And let me just tell you, this is like planning these can be a pain because if you forget um, one, like to make a hole, then you gotta go figure out how to drill it and it just becomes like a pain in the butt after you've printed it because, you know, PLA can be fi finicky if you're doing um, uh, a filament sign like using filament to 3d print okay so let's do that one and then i'm going to move another one i'm going to put it right here at top let me just go to a home view so i can see what's going on my top view okay so i'm going to put it about there and then i'm going to push it through and okay cool and then i'm going to grab let me grab all of these and move them so i don't have to keep on so i can stay in the home view here okay uh, top view. I'm gonna grab another one, and I think as I'm thinking about the like where I'm gonna put the wires. Oh no, I selected all of them. Ah, come on. There you go. I'm gonna put one here, and so this is. Let me just tell you, there's a, no method to this. I just kind of like eyeball it and figure out in my brain like where where does it make sense to add a a hole in the content um, or in the print to be able to feed the wire. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna make it smaller because my controls are on the way. I'm gonna push it down. And do you see how it's just pushing down? You wanna make sure you can see it at the other end because that's where your holes will go. And so I'm just playing it out, just kind of based on, this is like what I think will work. And I normally uh, will, put these on paper first um, when I'm creating signs, um, which I've been making a lot of lately. It seems like I posted one video and not everyone wants a sign. So a, a lighted sign or neon sign. I also caught slack for from people for like calling EL wire or neon sign. Like, come on, it's lighted and who cares? It's It doesn't use LEDs, it uses phosphorus, it's all semantics. But anyway, people are so like um, catty sometimes. Okay. So I'm just gonna put multiple holes in these, just planning it out. This is just based on what I drew out on paper and I'm gonna duplicate that one. And and you can just duplicate on the fly. I only have a few more I gotta do. So important um, point, we're gonna get to a point where uh, there's a cross here. So you see the E? So if I bring the wire, let's say I go boop, boop to the top, and then come down here. I need to bring the wire in at some point 
So I would probably bring the wire in um, here, right? Like here somewhere, maybe here and go whoop. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do, okay. So I'm gonna put this here to bring the wire in and that way I can just run the wire around the E down this way and there will be no overlap. And then I'm gonna duplicate that and just let's add a few more. We need one more for the R, so go boop, up. So I'm gonna need another one here to go down and around. Okay, so I need three on the R. One here, uh, one up here, potentially, yep. And then I'm gonna need one, oops, I need this one to be like right next to it so I can bring the wire in and through so I can create the, the jut there and then one last one to bring the wire back out. All right, so now, now what I need to do is I need to select it all Control A, or you can drag and drop, and then we're gonna uh, group it all together. So the outline, the that base, and all of the holes. And um, here you go. So this is the sign. These are the holes that it will print for us to feed wire through. Right, nicely planned out. And now you'll see that there's a nice inset in there for uh, your wire to sit in so you can glue your wire inside of it. And you also have the option of like, do you wanna use this as the back of it? Do you wanna use it as the front of it? Um, you can play around with that. But now we're gonna export it. And we're gonna export it as an STL file because my printer uh, software, I'm using Cura, which I'll show you how it works. So I'm gonna go to uh, STL. Is going to ask me, I actually just downloaded it as Incredible Jarve. I got to remember that name. So I forgot to rename it up here. You can rename your files up here. It gives it like a funky name. It's just like a random naming. I forgot to rename it. Um, but your file is here. So now we're going to go into our slicing software for our uh, printer. I use Cura. So I have my printer. I'm using my Creately Ender. I also have a resin printer. Um, However, you cannot use um, software, like Creately does not work with resin printers. So you have to use a different slicing software for resin printers. We're gonna create um, this using my uh, Creately, which uses filament. And I'm gonna do it in that glow in the dark filament. And here you'll see, I have a piece here that I was, I, I was making a new um, lift for my little AI robot, but I'll do that later. So we're just delete that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find that file, that incredible Jarvi. So I just clicked on the little folder. Let's look at, let's see if I can find it. Incredible, here it is, or incredible Jarv. So it's gonna bring it in. And notice that it's gonna be bigger than my platform here. Let me see if I can grab it and drag it, come on. Grab and drag, okay, here we go. So notice that only the things that are on the platform here will print. And it's also gonna calculate how long it will print. Um, but because the file, it doesn't fit completely on here, it'll ask me to like either slice it into different chunks or to uh, rescale it. So I'm gonna rescale it. There's this little icon over here where you can scale. And I'm gonna scale this down to 80% manually here. Let's see. And then I'll go back to the handles. I like to print on the diagonal. So let's, this here, this rotate tool allows you to then move it around. I like to print this way because it gives me more space. It's still too big. So let's scale it down to 70. All right, that looks like it'll fit. And then I'm gonna boop, 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 move it around, okay. Now it's gonna calculate how long this sucker is gonna to take to print. Now I can tell you these signs usually take a long time. However, this is a winner, only two hours and 40, uh, 41 minutes. So now I can export this file, send it to my printer to print. Um, and that's how I create my STL files using uh, Canva and Tinkercad. And it's uh, once it prints, we'll get a sign that we can run some EL wire through. 
If you're using neon wire, I could use neon wire for this too because it'll be wide enough. Um, for neon wire, you have to add some connectors, like little wire connectors that you'll feed through here, through here, through here, but you can still use it. Um, you'll just end up cutting like your neon wire at different spots and adding the little connectors so then you can feed through and reconnect at another point. Um, I'll try to do a video on wiring for neon wire, um, but I have some other projects that I wanted to uh, post also. But this is it guys. So I walked you through my whole process of making a custom lighted sign. Now mind you, let me go and show you again the size because this is um, the size my printer will print. Let me go to photo booth again, show you my signs. Okay, I gotta ship this one out to my, to my friend. So this is um, a sign I made, it says chingona. Um, so I think they're about nine inches, but if you, I think this one might be 10 because I print them on the diagonal. And you can see I ran the wire through so it has the holes for the wire and I just glued the wire in there. Um, and that's where your planning for the holes comes in. Um, I actually messed up on this one because I forgot to put a hole on my A. So I had to get creative and do something funky on that end, but it doesn't look bad. Um, so when I print the, the, uh, the sign for Tyler, I have a few options because it'll print this size for the entire thing. But if I print one letter, it'll print the same size. So for his sign, I may just do the T, the Y, the L, the R, uh, and the E separately and then um, glue them together so I can make each letter about this size. Um, so that's it. You can actually use Tinkercad to create tools that you can print. Um, you can use it to create models. Um, you can bring those, create those model images in other software and bring it in um, into Tinkercad. Uh, so you don't have to learn how to use a blender or a Fusion 3D if you're new to 3D printing. And if you don't have a 3D printer at home, you can go to your local library and check and see if they have a 3D printer that you can use. A lot of libraries have 3D printers that you can use for free to print out your um, files. So if you create files like this and you want to see what it looks like printed, um, you can go to your local library and use those. So if you have questions, feel free to send me a message. Uh, be sure to follow me here on TikTok. Excuse me, I got a sneeze. Uh, be sure to follow me here on TikTok. And um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And uh, I, I know I get a lot of questions about like, am I selling the signs? Um, so I have a full-time job, guys. That's very demanding. And it's hard for me to uh, sell product. Um, so I'm not taking any custom orders just yet, but I do plan to take some custom orders um, in the near future. I'll keep you posted on that. But in the meantime, uh, check out my channel. Be sure to follow me um, so you can keep up to date on all the projects. For my next project, we are going to be building a Pepper's Ghost. Um, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope that you'll stick around. Uh, thanks, and I hope you all have a great Saturday.